Hello dear students, welcome to Varsha Tutorials. This is Miss Varsha and today we are going to study Kingdom Planting. Children, we all love plants and plants belong to Kingdom Planting which forms second largest kingdom after Kingdom Animalia. Children, do you know which cell organelles differentiate plant cell from animal cell? Yes, of course, it is chloroplast and cell wall. Cell wall is made up of sugar called as cellulose and as there are a variety of plants available on this earth, the most abundant sugar is cellulose. Also within the chloroplast, plants have a green color pigment called as chlorophyll with the help of which it synthesizes its own food that is with the help of chlorophyll, sunlight, water, it can prepare its own food and therefore the plants are called as autotrophs. As plants can prepare their own food, it is not only utilized by themselves but also uh, it is utilized by the other living organisms on the earth. Therefore, plants are the main source of food to all other living organisms. Therefore, they are called as producers. So, how will you define plants? So, plants are a group of autotrophic living organisms having eukaryotic cells with cell walls. Now, let us proceed further with basis of classification of plants. Basis for classification of plants. That means which characteristics or what criteria are considered while classifying the plants. The first is the presence or absence of organs. Here the organ means root, stem, leaves. Whether the plant body is having well differentiated root, stem or leaves is considered while classification. That is extent of differentiation forms the first criteria of classification. Then comes the presence or absence of separate conducting tissue for conduction of water and food. You are, you are well aware that which uh, tissues in plants conduct food and uh, water? Yes, of course, it is xylem and phloem. So whether the plant is having uh, separate conducting tissue uh, that is xylem and phloem is considered as second criteria for the classification of plants. Then some plants may have seeds and some plants do not. So uh, depending on whether the uh, plants are bearing seeds or not, that forms the third criteria. And if at all the plants bear seeds, then whether the uh, seeds are enclosed in the fruits or seeds are without fruits, that is also considered. And if at all seeds are enclosed in the fruits, then such plants are called as angiosperms. And if the seeds are naked, that is no fruit is there to enclose the seed, then such plants are called as gymnosperms. Angiosperms and gymnosperms we are going to study in detail later. The next criteria is number of cotyledons. If the seed is having single cotyledon, then such plants are called as monocots. Mono means single. And if the seeds are having two cotyledons, such plants are called as dicots. Di means two. So monocots and dicots. At higher level of plant classification, different characteristics are considered while classifying. For example, depending on presence or absence of flower, fruit or seeds, kingdom plantae is classified into two groups, cryptogams and phanerogams. Cryptogams are seedless and flowerless plants. If they are flowerless, then you must be wondering that how do they reproduce? Well, they reproduce with the help of spores. Then, phanerogams are flowering and seed producing higher plants. They have well developed roots, stem, leaves and vascular tissue. Today, we are going to study cryptogams in detail. Phanerogams we will be studying in the next week. So, let us proceed further. So the cryptogams which include seedless and flowerless plants are further classified into three divisions. Thallophyta, Bryophyta and Pteridophyta. And now we are going to do comparative study. Children, whenever we are studying many divisions or many kingdoms, it is always advised to study comparatively. That's why we have plotted columns here. To understand these three divisions, that is Thallophyta, Bryophyta and Pteridophyta, let us first consider the similar points. These plants belonging to division Thallophyta are eukaryotic. 
The meaning of eukaryotic is already explained in my previous video that is difference between prokaryotic and eukaryotic. The link of which is given in the description box. To watch it, please click the link and have the thorough knowledge of what is dif the difference between prokaryotic and eukaryotic. So the plants belonging to division Thallophyta are eukaryotic. They are multicellular. Multicellular means they are made up of many cells. Autotrophic. Autotrophic means as they belonging to kingdom plantae, they are having uh, pigment called as chlorophyll and because of which they are able to perform photosynthesis and prepare its own food. Therefore, they are called as the mode of nutrition is autotrophic. That is, they prepare their own food. Auto means self. Trophic means food. Then they are non-motile. That is, locomotion does not take place in such plants. That is, they cannot, cannot move from one place to other. But small movements are shown by these plants. But locomotion, that is movement from one place to another is not shown. Same points are for bryo, plants belonging to bryophytes. That is eukaryotic, multicellular, autotrophic, non-motile. And pteridophytes are also eukaryotic, multicellular, autotrophic, non-motile. To remember these uh, four points, let us take initial letter of each, each word. That is E, M, A, N. That becomes E-man. So, just to remember, you have to use this mnemonics E-man. E stands for Euro, eukaryotic, multicellular, autotrophic and non-motile. Similarly, all bryophytes are also E-man. Don't write E-man in your paper, but you have to, to keep it in mind. These are the mnemonics. Even pteridophytes are eman. That is eukaryotic, multicellular, autotrophic and non-motile. Now let's see how reproduction takes place in all three divisions. We know that thallophytes, bryophytes and pteridophytes belong to cryptogams. And cryptogams are flowerless plants. Then how do the reproduction takes place? Well, it takes place by the spore formation. Even bryophytes reproduce asexually by spores formation. Even pteridophytes reproduce asexually by spores formation. But sometimes pteridophytes reproduce sexually by zygote formation. So most of the time pteridophytes reproduce asexually by spores formation. And these spores are found at the backside of the leaves. Or we can say the posterior sides of the leaves. But sometimes they reproduce sexually by zygote formation. So pteridophytes reproduce asexually by spores and sexually by zygote formation. Now let us study each division in detail. Children you must have visited a pond or lake and you must have seen a green covering over it. What is that? It's algae. And all algae belong to Division Thallophyta. Word Thallophyta is made up of two words. Thallus and Phyta. Thallus means plant body is not differentiated. Differentiated into root, stem, and leaves. If you observe plant bodies like algae, alva or eulothrix, will you be able to distinguish what is root, stem and leaves? Of course not. That means the plant body is not differentiated into root, stem and leaves. Now the habitat. Where are they found? The exclusively aquatic exclusively aquatic aquatic means water living they they are found only in water and they can it can be marine water also or fresh water also okay now as the body is not differentiated into root stem and leaves no question of conducting tissue so the conducting tissue like xylem and phloem will be absent 
Accentin Thalophytes Examples of Thalophyta are Spirogyra, Alva, Eulothrix, Sargassum Children, you have to keep these examples in mind because it can be asked in odd man out or in filling the blanks also. Now let us proceed with Bryophyta. Children, have you ever scratched your well with like substance from the damp wall or rock? Well, it's a moss and moss belongs to division Bryophyta. The word Bryophyta is derived from the Greek word Bryon and Phyta. Bryon means moss and Phyta means plants. So all mosses belongs to Bryophyta. Now let's see his differentiation. If you observe any one example of the uh, plant belonging to division uh, Bryophyta, then you will not see well differentiated root stem or leaves. They are having root like part, stem like part, but not true leaves or true stems. And they are having a, a root like structure called as rhizoids for absorption of water. So they are having stem like leaves like or leaf like parts and root like part are called as rhizoids. They are useful for absorption of water. As the body is not differentiated into a root stem and leaves, so vascular tissue which is responsible for conduction of water and food is absent. That is xylem and phloem are absent. So what about the presence or absence of vascular tissue? It will be absent. As vascular tissue is absent, though it grows on the land, grows on land. Now we are talking about the habitat. Though it grows on land, but it requires water for survival and it, it does not have true roots. So it lives near the water, water bodies. Also it requires water, requires water for reproduction. So they require land for the growth and water for reproduction. Therefore these plants Belonging to division Bryophyta are also called as amphibians of plant kingdom. Okay, that is Fumaria, Mercantia, Rishia, and Antherosaurus are few examples of the plant belonging to division bryophyta children have you seen ornamental plant colors fern well it's, it belongs to division pteridophyta the word pteridophyta is derived from the greek word pteris and phyta pteris means fern and phyta means plant so all ferns belong to division pteridophyta now let's see its differentiation this a pteridophyta plants belonging to pteridophyta are well differentiated into root stem and leaves if you observe any of the example of the pteridophyta plant or any fern plant you will see true root stem or leaf they are well differentiated and because they are well differentiated they need vascular system for its conduction of food and water so vascular system is well developed in pterodophytes so we will write about the presence or absence of vascular tissue as well developed it is having well developed vascular tissue or we can say vas instead of tissue we can say vascular system it's well developed 
okay now due to well differentiated body parts and also well developed vascular system this plants are well adapted to grow on the land so the plants belonging to the pteridophytes are first terrestrial plants Keep this point in mind. The first terrestrial plants, plants belonging to pteridophytes, are first terrestrial plants as they have well differentiated root stem and leaves, and they have well developed vascular system, which makes them adapted for the terrestrial habitat. Also, they grow in shady and moist places. Places and avoid. direct sunlight we can find them in the cracks of the uh, rocks also or in the uh, inside the crack of the bricks also so nephrolepis marsilia teres silaginella a few examples of plants belonging to division pteridophyta quick recap of all these three divisions thallophyta bryophyta and pteridophyta first point is they are thallo they are uh, eukaryotic multicellular autotrophic non motile that is you have to write eman same for bryophyta uh, they are eukaryotic multicellular autotrophic non motile that is eman pteridophyta also eukaryotic multicellular autotrophic non motile eman then second point they uh, thallophyta reproduces with the help of spores bryophyta also reproduces with the help of spores even pteridophyta reproduces asexually with the help of spores and sometimes sexually with the help of zygote then about the habitat thallophytes are exclusively aquatic aquatic can be marine also or fresh water also then bryophytes grow on land near the water bodies requires water for reproduction therefore they are called as amphibians of plant kingdom of plant kingdom and uh, Pteridophytes are first terrestrial plants. Then body differentiation, thallophytes body is not differentiated into root stem or leaves, whereas bryophytes have stem-like, leaf-like parts, and the, its root-like parts are called as rhizoids, which are doing the work of absorption of water. Whereas pteridophytes have well differentiated root, stem, and leaves. Then let's see next point: presence or absence of vascular tissue that is xylem or phloem. is absent in thallophyta vascular tissue is again absent in bryophyta and it is in pteridophytes they are having well developed vascular system then examples of thallophyta are spirogyra alba eulothrix cara examples of bryophyta moss there is funeria mercantia ricia and thoroceros examples of pteridophyta nephrolepis marsilia teres Silagenilla. That's all for today, dear students. Hope this comparative study is beneficial to you and has made your learning easier. And you are no more confused with the terms thallophyta, bryophyta, and pteridophyta. I hope you will also make the chart of the same and do the comparative study. If you feel that my video is going to benefit your friends and relatives, do share it with them. Because knowledge sharing is knowledge squaring. Also don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. For more updates hit the bell icon. Thanks for watching.